23 containers have already gone overboard and there are dozens more at risk of falling into the sea. At least 270 containers went overboard and have been washed up on beaches on several islands. More than 80 shipping containers fell from the YM efficiency, most sunk to the sea floor. Maritime freight transport is certainly the most efficient, cheap and safe method currently used. More than 5,400 container ships cross the oceans annually, carrying basically everything, from groceries to toxic and explosive materials, so that the world continues to advance and be what it is today. Proof of this is that about 83% of all cargo transported in the world is done by ships, and a large part of it is transported inside the container, which ensures its safety and protects it from the elements. However, as the atmosphere is constantly changing, it favors the emergence of bad weather, accompanied by strong winds, rain, and a great instability of the seawaters. The ships that sail through them are at the mercy of these conditions. In extreme events, the ships are so battered that they lose a good part of the contents that were being transported. Usually this happens in the open sea, and when it happens, the damages and the losses are inevitable. To give you an idea, more than 3,000 containers fell into the sea in 2020. This number is more than double the average of containers lost between 2008 and 2019, according to the World Shipping Council. Experts attribute this increase in the numbers of containers falling into the sea to four main factors. The design and ever-increasing size of container ships, increasingly severe weather, more disposition of containers on ships, and attempts to reduce costs by overloading the ships. As ships carry many containers, on average more than 17,000, it is not possible to know exactly what is inside each one of them. In case of container fall, it may happen that there are dangerous, flammable, or biological risk materials such as chemicals, fuels, solvents, and radioactive materials that are usually soluble in water, can quickly mix with seawater and pose a great risk to marine life and the neighboring population. Therefore, when these events happen, the ship must immediately communicate and inform the authorities about the incident and at the same time, send precise geographical coordinates of the location of the incident so that search ships can move there as quickly as possible. But if the weather is still very bad and the sea is still very agitated, search ships may be forced to have to abort the mission and wait until the conditions improve, which can take many hours, further aggravating the situation. This was what happened with the container ship MOL Comfort, which left Singapore bound for the port of Jeddah in Saudi Arabia and split in half on July 17, 2013, due to bad weather, sinking with all its cargo of 4,382 containers. The MOL Comfort had split in two as a consequence of the constant extreme stress on the hull due to big waves caused by bad weather. This resulted in a giant crack in the middle of the ship. The curious thing is that the stern sank on June 27th, and the bow, which is the front part, sank on July 11th as a result of an unexpected fire. There were several attempts to rescue the cargo, but all were unsuccessful since the weather was very harsh. The crew of 26 men abandoned the ship in time and were rescued, but the ship took to the bottom of the sea about 1,500 tons of fuel. During a night of bad weather on November 30th, 2020, the container ship One Apis, which left China bound for the United States, encountered a powerful storm cell with strong winds and large waves that caused the violent movement of the ship, resulting in the loss of 1,816 containers, of which 64 contained dangerous materials that sank. In fact, a large part of the containers sank because of damage and cracks 
caused by the fall and impact with seawater. An estimated loss of more than $200 million. Even a large quantity of the containers that did not fall into the sea and remained on the ship were severely damaged as a result of the fall, or for having been hit by other containers containing heavier loads. Several of them opened, and the cargo inside fell into the sea. Large container ships usually travel with more than 17,000 containers stacked one on top of the other, easily exceeding 20 meters in height from the ship's floor. Because of that, there are various ways to secure them. Usually strong metal bars are used, preventing the containers from moving or falling, but even with all the countermeasures, in really agitated seas, they can end up loosening and falling aboard. As inside, there are always valuable cargoes like cars, luxury decoration items, various machinery, construction materials, among others. The biggest victim always ends up being the owner of the cargo. It is really difficult to recover the containers from the bottom of the sea and bring them to the surface. The first and main problem is the depth of the sea. As it is not possible to send divers to at least try to locate the containers, the only feasible means are ROVs or remotely operated underwater vehicles. These are submersible vehicles operated remotely by a person or group of people on board a ship or on land. They are capable of descending to great depths of up to 4,000 meters and have various mechanical devices, lights, sensors, and cameras. As these vehicles are not capable of bringing the containers to the surface, their use is restricted to finding, manipulating, and securing the steel cables of the containers to be lifted one by one by some rescue ship, a task that is quite meticulous, delicate, and can extend for several hours or days depending on the agility of the ROV. Depending on the location, number, position of each container, current of the sea, and how uneven the seafloor is, the process of finding and bringing them to the surface can take several months. There are cases where the containers are not even found. Imagine if inside one of them was your brand new Mercedes G63, imported directly from Germany, and also your Lamborghini Aventador. But why do some ships end up losing the container in bad weather, and others do not? The phenomenon behind this is known as parametric rolling. The fundamental dynamics that causes this type of behavior is currently considered only as reasonably clarified, despite this phenomenon being known for more than half a century. It affects container ships much more, due to the geometry of their hulls. Both the part that is above the waterline and the part that is below the waterline, and also the bow and the stern, tend to be wider. These characteristics contribute to the variation of the ship's stability characteristics due to constant changes in the geometry of the underwater hull as the waves travel along the ship. Parametric rolling also happens when the waves do not hit the ship facing the bow directly, but at a side angle. The ship enters a rotating movement in sync with the waves. If it is severe, it not only displaces and eventually drops the container, but also creates powerful torsion and flexion forces, potentially splitting the ship in half, like the MOL comfort. To avoid this, weather forecasts play a fundamental role. Knowing the conditions and the situation of the sea is extremely important to avoid areas where the sea is very agitated, posing a risk for the occurrence of container falls. If the containers are recovered, there is usually not much that can be done with the cargo, since seawater is highly corrosive. If there was a car inside, in addition to being severely damaged by the fall, it will also be very rusty. Everything will depend on how long it took to be removed, and usually, there is nothing to take advantage of what was left. In addition, the pollution of the sea generated in these events is unimaginable. Many containers open on impact, and the cargo spreads out. Tires, cardboard, cars, metals, among others, all dispersed into the sea. But when the lost or damaged cargo is the responsibility of the transport company, it must reimburse the owner of the cargo, but this can take a while.
Trains are also a very attractive and widely used means of cargo transport, just like ships. But the journey is slower and longer. The transport of large volumes of cargo by ships continues to be the most attractive, efficient, cheap and safe method currently employed, even if subject to the terrible conditions of the seas that make them occasionally lose some containers. If you enjoyed this episode of Engineering Secrets, consider subscribing and helping our channel through our Patreon or cryptocurrency donations. We try our best to bring high quality videos for you. All the links are in the description. Thank you for watching.